Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to CG Mailbag. I'm Mark Poulton, a writer, a co-creator of Graveyard Shift. I also have a new book out on Indiegogo right now called Sea Dog and Codename Kill Switch. It's an awesome book. I worked on it with my son and artist Clint Holinsky. Um, go check it out. There's tons of great merch, uh, great tiers, rewards available, including this awesome Sea Dog hockey jersey that I'm wearing. Um, but that's not why we're here today. Uh, today we're talking about uh, your questions, and the question I received was, how did I get my start working with Rob Liefeld? Now, I, I've, I've made it no secret, Rob Liefeld is my all-time favorite comic book creator. Uh, the guy's the reason that I wanted to make comic books. So in the early 2000s, when I was first breaking into the industry, or at least trying to, uh, Rob had a message board. I was one of the original members of that message board, and I would post uh, pages from my comic book um, as it was about to come out and Rob was always real supportive of it. Um, one day, uh, it was Thanksgiving 2006, I got a call from a number I didn't recognize. I decided to answer it, usually I wouldn't have. Uh, best decision I ever made. Uh, when I said hello on the other end, I heard, Polton, it's Liefeld, what's up? And uh, it was my hero uh, calling me. <laughs> um, couldn't believe it, uh, we talked for two hours. And when I say we talked, Rob did all the talking. Occasionally I would go, uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, that, that's just how it is when you talk to, to Rob. Um, but the, the purpose of his call was uh, to tell me that he was planning on bringing uh, one of his characters, Evangeline, back. And he wanted me to be the writer for it. So uh, I couldn't believe it. It was, it's, it was amazing. Um, but this was way back in 2006. Uh, my Evangeline run didn't come out until 2011. So in the meantime, Rob would give me other assignments. Um, I worked on a Brigade relaunch. Uh, I worked on uh, Image United. I did a, the Bloodstrike backup story on that. Um, I did some stuff that never saw the light of day. Uh, a Brigade animated pitch. A huge Supreme crossover. Uh, probably a bunch of other stuff I'm forgetting, but, uh, when Aveng Evangeline finally did come out and it was because I kept always, you know, bugging him, reminding him, being respectful, but always saying, Hey, don't forget about Evangeline, uh, to the point where Rob nicknamed me the squeaky wheel. Uh, but Evangeline did come out and around the same time Rob was working at DC, uh, during the new 52. And they kept giving him more and more books. And he was like, I can do these books, but I need some help. And they were like, who do you want to work with? And my name was the first name he mentioned. And DC uh, agreed to it. So I got to work on Hawkman with Rob. Uh, the artist was Joe Bennett. The inker was Art T. Bear. It was a great team. Uh, they all had ties to Extreme Comics. So I was in fanboy heaven. Um, so that's how I got my start with Rob. Uh, that's pretty much my whole history with Rob. So thanks for the question, and thanks for tuning in to uh, CG Mailbag. And please, go check out Sea Dog and Codename Kill Switch. Thanks, guys. Hey there, everybody. Uh, Clint Talinsky here. I am the artist on Sea Dog and Codename Kill Switch with uh, Mark Poulton as the writer. And uh, we've got some questions for all the creators today for uh, Mark's uh, CG Mailbag. Um, the question that I got was, what are some uh, good rates for somebody starting out that they should ask for, for pencils, inks, colors, lettering, uh, file formatting, experience aside. <laughs> and um, it's a good question because when you're starting out, obviously you don't really know, but um, I put down a basic list and realistically, this depends on like what publisher you're working for, but a good starting penciling rate would be a hundred bucks a page. 
Um, that's for small press, obviously. It's not Marvel or DC. I think DC's starting penciling rate when you get hired is 250 a page. But obviously, none of the smaller press publishers are going to pay what DC is paying. So, say as a starting penciler, 100 bucks a page is a good rate. Um, an inker, I would say 75 bucks a page is a good rate for an inker for you know a starting publisher, uh, for a starting inker. Colorists, um, I end up hiring a lot of colorists for my self-published books that I do, like 50 bucks a page is what I pay my colors usually about in there anywhere from 40 to 60 depending on you know what I can afford but uh, 50 would be a starting good color straight uh, letters I've used a bunch of different letter letterers I think the highest I ever paid was 15 bucks a page I think for the most part you can get a letter for ten dollars a page realistically if you're doing your own book or you know publishing yourself you can probably figure out how to letter yourself also which is what I did um, for file formatting uh, not exactly sure uh, what you'd be asking for a page rate for that if you're just I mean most artists if you're sending through emails you're just sending your files up as uh, tips or whatnot so I'm not sure what sort of fi file formatting they need but those are those would be good rates to ask for if you're starting out getting a job with you know a small publisher. Um, I'm not even sure what kind of rates like you know Dark Horse or Boom or Image you know kind of have anymore right now. I think it really varies from project to project and from publisher to publisher. But at least that gives you a baseline to kind of you know guide yourself. And obviously, you know the more you get known, uh, the more successful your books do. You can probably ask for a little bit more. But for for a starting out creator, those are good rates to start out from. So hopefully this answers your question. And thanks for asking it. And check out C Dog and Codename Kill Switch on Indiegogo. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. Like what? Hey y'all, it's Mandy. So yeah, I'm just here to answer a really quick question for you guys. Um, Mark asked me to um, you know pick a question and answer it. So the one I chose is music or no when creating. If I listen to music, what am I jamming out to? So all right, it kind of changes with me. Um, I love alternative music. So you know, depending on my mood, sometimes it's Avenged Sevenfold, Escape the Fate, uh, you know, um, Bullet for My Valentine. Those are some of my favorites that um, I love listening to. And then also, um, you know, sometimes when I'm feeling more like dancey, I'll put on some Britney Spears or, you know, um, Avril Lavigne or something like that. But um, also, there are times when I am kind of concentrating and I need to, you know, like get in the mood for what I'm doing. And in that case, I usually listen to music from the 50s and 60s. I'm a huge fan of um, that era of music. Um, so, yeah, like Buddy Holly, the Everly Brothers, um, Patsy Cline, all of that. So, it really depends. But you can almost guarantee every time I draw, I will listen. <laughs> I will listen to Hail to the King. So... Yeah, so that is the music I listen to, um, which is awesome. I suggest everybody check this out. Um, also, since I'm here, why not go on and pitch my book, right? I mean, like, what is worth the wizard, y'all? <laughs> so make sure y'all run on over to Indiegogo. Check out my campaign. It is in demand right now. We have hit a 9K stretch goal, you guys. So super exciting. Um, so... Yeah, Mark, thank you so much. This was awesome, hun, and love you guys so much. Bye. Hi, guys. I'm Antonio Bryce. I'm the creator of the comic book series Brand uh, and the upcoming sequel to Brand, which is called uh, Brand Way of the Gun. We'll be launching that early next year. Uh, I was asked what books I would recommend uh, if if uh, you're looking to improve visual storytelling, uh, you know, just I think that's that's pretty important. And there's a couple of uh, stories that I would recommend, but let me the the, the first one I would uh, I always tell people 
uh, check out Spider-Man vs. Wolverine. Uh, it's written by uh, James C. Owsley and uh, illustrated by Mark Bright. Um, uh, James Owsley would later go on to change his name to Christopher Priest. And, uh, you know, who, you know, this, so this is some of the work that he did when he was at Marvel. It's a brilliant story. Uh, he uses a couple of things, uh, that I've tried to re remember when I'm working on brand, i.e. put something out there for the reader because, you know, it is visual. So your artist is going to show you something and it's not until you get maybe 10, 15, 20 pages in that you realize that you saw something very important at the beginning of the story, but you didn't know. And uh, Christopher Priest was brilliant in the script for Spider-Man vs. Wolverine because right at the very beginning of the story, you see the character Charlie or Charlemagne, uh, who is an old uh, CIA operative uh buddy of Wolverine. They've done a lot of like black ops together. And, um, you're, you see Charlemagne right at the beginning of the story, but you don't get all the information until later on. And, uh, matter of fact, you see at the very beginning of the story, Wolverine and Charlemagne are, are they're jammed up in a, in a dangerous mission over in Europe. They're fighting for their lives to get out of there Obviously, Wolverine is successful and they get out of the, you know, they manage to, to get out of there by the skin of their teeth. And then we go to modern New York and Spider-Man's on patrol and he's he's swinging around and uh, he sees this gorgeous woman and and his spider sense goes off for some reason. But instead of stopping her, he decides that, oh, maybe something's going on. And it's not until you get later on in the story you figure out that the woman that Spider-Man saw that made his spider sense go off was Charlemagne. And I remember, I think I was about 14 when I read <laughs> Spider-Man versus Wolverine, uh, when, when that story came out. And I, I remember seeing that. And when I realized that the character right at the beginning of the story, the, the, the little innocent looking beautiful woman that Spider-Man saw as he was swinging by on patrol was actually Charlemagne. I was like, Wow, and and that really stuck to me. Someone as a uh, as an aspiring writer, uh, that that particular thing is something that uh, I think if I'm doing my job right as I'm creating my stories, there'll be a couple of moments in there uh, where you go, wait a minute, didn't this didn't he show this uh, in the previous issue? And then, because I want you to actually have to go back. Because that's, that's one of the things that I loved about the Spider-Man versus Wolverine. I think it's a brilliant story. Uh, so, if uh, if you are someone that's a comic book creator, if you're wanting to write, or even if, you, if you're wanting to be an artist, uh, take a look at Spider-Man versus Wolverine. Uh, there's... Tons of copies floating around on eBay. You can get it on Amazon and all that kind of stuff. Check it out. I think that story is brilliant. I think it's important. And obviously, uh, if you like Christopher Priest, this is some of his earliest work. And I think it's uh, brilliant. But, uh, okay, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. And, uh, again, check me out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, all at Akari Press. I'm out. Hey, Mark, and hey, everybody watching CG Mailbag. Uh, my name is Macho Dan, and I'm here to answer your questions. So the question I got is, how can I uh, get a copy of Hero if I missed out on the initial crowdfunding campaign? And uh, a lot of people would say, no, I can't make that happen. Wait for the next campaign. But um, the customer is always right, in my opinion. I try to always go above and beyond and help out customers if they have a question um, or if they need something. So if you want a copy of Hero, um, I can do single issue or I can do digital. Uh, if you want to, please uh, DM me and I will um, let you know how we can make that happen. I, I will have limited quantity uh, to make this work. Um, and we'll, I'll have to charge you shipping for any sort of physical copy. But if you want to do that, I will, um, figure out how to make it happen. Um, so once again, you can find me on Twitter and it's at Macho Dano. I'd be happy to try to 
work a way to get you an issue of Hero and whatever else you need. Also, uh, really quick, I just wanted to let everybody know I am running a um, contest on Twitter right now. It's super easy, and this contest is called Project Indie Angel. It's basically a way for... Um, uh, me to help bring um, a better Christmas to a lot of people that are more unfortunate and might not have um, anybody getting them Christmas presents. So all you have to do is this. You just need to donate to a charity. It could be um, Angel Tree. It could be Toys for Tots. It could be anything. A Boys and Girls Club. I, I don't really care. As long as you're donating to a charity in the form of a toy or something for Christmas, take a photo of what you're donating and tweet it at me. That's all you got to do. Once you've done that, you get entered to win a bunch of incredible prizes. A lot of uh, these prizes have been donated by Mark himself, as well as a bunch of other really great indie uh, creators. So uh, take a look. Um, if you find me on Twitter, you'll be able to read all about it, watch a video, and, and find out more inf information. But I would love to bring uh, Brighten Everybody's Christmas if I can. Please help me out in doing that and win a bunch of really cool stuff too. So uh, once again, I'm Macho Dano. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Yeah, just show every day puppy always playing, always smiling. Till the day he was given an enchanted medallion. Now he has superpowers, he can fly and do it all. If you get in trouble, then you know just who to call. I'm your dog, say I'm your dog. Ain't no problem, I can solve. I can fly, I'm super strong. I'm your dog, say I'm your dog. And I'm always on the job, got your back.